Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Now today we're going to be looking at creating isometric pixel art um, within Photoshop. You can do this in Illustrator, any kind of drawing program that you want really. Um, this follows on from the previous tutorial that I did uh, about creating the isometric grid. Um, which, as you can see, is what we used here on this one. Now, if you haven't seen that tutorial, go and check it out. It takes a few minutes. It's really not a long time at all. Um, so what you really want to do is grab the isometric grid uh, AI file and drop it into Photoshop. That'll make a little window pop up here that says open a smart object. That's fine. You want to crop to pound in box and hit OK. And what that'll do is that just places your grid on the screen. Now, if you actually rasterize this, it gets looking a little bit better, but I've created this one, which I basically just messed around with the settings, reduced the opacity on it and things like that. So, um, oops, that's the sky. So what I'm actually going to do is just take this layer here and copy it over because I prefer using this grid. It's not quite as harsh on my eyes and stuff like that. Um, so there we go. Good to go. We've got our grid imported within Photoshop. I showed you how to do this in the last tutorial, so I'm not going to go into the details. Um, this one's really just going to be about how to use this to create artwork, basically. Um, so you want to put the grid in a white background in a folder uh, and just name that grid or something which you'll remember. Um, and then you want to basically make sure you're separating your artwork into separate layers. As you can see in this document here, Inside this group, the water, the grass, and the dirt blocks are on all different layers, um, and the sky is on a different layer as well. So I'm just going to quickly color sample these two because they're not actually in the palette. Um, and I'll just add those to the palette here. Add to swatches, and we can call that swatch one. That's fine. And then I'll take the dark brown, and I'll add that to the swatches too. Okay, now I'm working on a uh, Cintiq 13HD, which is just a drawing tablet. I recommend getting a tablet or at least a, um, uh, like an, if it's not a screened one, then just a flat one, like a bamboo or something like that. They're really, really great for this kind of artwork. Um, and you'll find that drawing the lines is a lot, lot easier um, using a, a pen tablet rather than using your mouse. But the way to get things started is I'm going to do it slightly different to this one. I'm not going to copy it because you can see how that one's made already. I'm just going to do one large block in the sky and maybe put something interesting like, like a statue or something like that. So basically you just want to follow using um, your grid that you created before. You just want to follow the lines until you create a shape that you're happy with. Say for example, something like that. And what you're drawing here is actually the top surface of a cube um, that you're going to be creating. So for example, that's the floor. Now, if you wanted this to be even all the way around, you just drop it by segments. So you drop this by one, two, three cubes, um, and then we can drag it along. Maybe say it goes up a cube there. So it's actually only two segments high along this edge. Um, and then maybe when it gets back to here, we can have it drop down to being three. And then that links up there. And then if we wanted it to, it could actually be four along here. Um, now, that doesn't look super, super great because of this sort of corner here. So basically, there's certain things which do look good and certain things which don't look good and isometric. Um, but it is completely up to you. If you think that looked fine, then great, go for it. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, I happen to think that it looked a bit crappy. So what we could do is something like that. Just keep it nice and flat. Um, <clears throat> maybe we could bring this side down because where we can see the underside of that, uh, like, so that actually looks a bit better than, um, having the lower edge over there. Okay, good. So that's basically, um, the size of the, um, platform that we want to draw. And as you can see, as long as you keep it in line with, uh, the lines on the grid, you can basically move it anywhere you want. So you can move it over to here. And that's a good thing about isometric. You can move these things around really, really easily. And as long as you move them on the axis as well, you can animate them very, very easily, which is good news for us. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is make sure we just zoom all the way in. And if you grab your paint bucket tool, um, which if you can't see, you've probably got the gradient tool open. And you just want to fill in every face that is sort of facing one side with the dark color. And then grab your light brown and fill in the lighter sides there. Now, I don't actually like lined artwork for this style. So all you need to do is simply come along and just trace over those pixels with your pen tool. And it gets rid of the lines. Now, on the other one, you can see I've done a bit of shading. And I'll do that here too. Um, 
So as you can see, you don't actually have to be perfectly on the lines as long as you're perfectly on the angles. That's the things that really matter. Um, so say for example here, all I need to do is just come through and sort of highlight bits of this area with the lighter brown and you get that kind of textured dirt kind of look. Uh, now this is a whole sort of thing in itself. Um, I'm just sort of explaining the process behind how I created this piece of artwork. Uh, but if you want to draw into pixel art and get into how, like really well how that's doing, there's plenty of tutorials out there. I'll probably make one actually um, regarding uh, the, the process that I do in more detail. But this one was just sort of how to draw on an isometric grid. Um, so to make this, this sort of layer here, it's kind of the reverse. You want mainly light brown with touches of dark um, and it just gives it a bit of texture. Whereas the dark side faces, you obviously want mainly dark with um, touches of light. So I am going a bit faster than this because I don't want the tutorial to drag on too long. Um, and you can see here that this extends out a bit too far. Um, now, if we use the eraser tool, it kind of kind of works, but then you get some of these soft edges. If you want perfect edges, just grab the lasso tool and cut it like that. And then you can see that if you get exactly on the line, you can get perfectly hard edges on your um, on your drawings. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm happy with that as the dirt. What I might do is just quickly add a bit of a line there, and that just emphasizes the fact that that's um, uh, a cutaway. But I don't know, maybe not actually. Maybe just leave it like this. Also, a nice thing to do for these kind of things specifically is just have a few bits of dirt just falling off. I find that looks good. Um, or you can have bits which sort of hang down. Um, so yeah, that's just a little little trick. Uh, now let's talk about grass. So we want to add some grass on the top. Best thing to do is put that on a new layer. Make sure that the first one's labeled dirt, just so you know what you're doing. And then this one can be labeled grass. Okay. Now literally you just draw on top. It's as simple as that. I find it's best to go around the edges first. Um, don't worry if you overlap a bit because it's, it's kind of like natural grass. It can do kind of what it wants. Uh, and actually, if you do some of these uh, drop down bits here, it looks like the grass is kind of wild and overflowing, which is really good. I think it looks great. Um, so you have like little sprigs coming out and things like that. Maybe if you actually have things like this, it looks kind of like vines growing down the edge of the um, the edge of the brick or whatever it is you want to call this. Um, now, just kind of rushing through this, I'd usually take a bit more care, um, but I'm afraid I don't have all day. I've got to be out soon. <laughs> but I wanted to get this tutorial in because it is a nice tutorial to get started with if you want to work in pixel art. Um, and this is basically how I started. I kind of just took a guess uh, and did it and it looked all right. So I figured I'd give you guys a tutorial. Um, so if you want to, you can actually increase the, your brush size. I find it's best to work with a one pixel brush when you're finding the shape. And then if you're just coloring in mass sections, you can obviously increase your brush size to whatever you want. Uh, and then once you've done it, you can fill that in. Great. Okay, so then you just want to grab your lighter color. Remember which way that your light is coming from, which is up here onto this face. So if we were to have, say, for example, like a big block of something here, um, this side would be the dark side and the light is coming in this way, if that makes sense. So you just got to remember that when it's doing the grass. Um, you can kind of get away with what you want, though, if I'm being perfectly honest, um, with pixel art kind of things like this, especially with light on grass because it's so sort of fluctuating, if that makes sense, because it could be moving in the wind or whatever. So you can kind of get away with whatever you want to get away with. Um, I'm just going to quickly highlight this like that, like so, and then have kind of a little cutoff point where I can quickly sort of assess um, about there seems fine so we'll do that and then maybe a few more pieces like so and then I know that later I'm going to want some water running off this way, so it's good to draw sort of draw some sprigs that look like they're overgrowing into uh, a kind of cutout area. So we'll do that as well, um, and then we'll just keep quickly adding a few little bits over here. Like I said, I am rushing this just a little bit um, because I don't have a lot of time today. So usually I take a bit more care in the shading of like the grass areas and things. Um, but as I said, I'm also developing this technique. So, hey, this might look just as fine as the others. You don't know. 
Um, I'm still kind of working on it. Now, what I want is actually a little bit of a cutaway here. So if I grab that brown again and then on a layer above it, call this one dirt two, um, what I can do is define the area that I want to be the cutout or the lowered part and where it ends and how deep I want that to be cut out to. I can then just um, actually know that wouldn't be how it looks, would it? Because we're looking at it from an angle. It'd be you'd see the cutout here and then it'll kind of curve around and you wouldn't, you'd just see the top edge. Um, so there are kind of still some rules of perspective, um, but it's an isometric perspective of it. So as you can see, you're not constrained to squares. You can draw circles and things if you want. Um, it's just best to work from cubes and squares from the start and then um, move forward onto the circle parts because in that way, you know, you've got your basics right. Um, okay, so if we zoom out to the size that's gonna be, that looks all right, I think. That looks just fine. Um, maybe the grass could be a bit better, but we can work on that later. Um, so we wanna add the water now. So we're gonna want a bit more on our layers panel and call this one water. And then we just want to choose the path where our water is going to sit. So it's going to come along here, follow the angle. Remember any line which is straight has to follow one of these angles. Now in this style, you can kind of afford to be a little bit wobbly because that's the style of it is. But if you're working on something like a old school cube boy from Newgrounds or something like that, um, that was all done perfectly on the lines, um, which is an issue, which is, you know, Bit more regimented than what we've got going on here. Um, so we're just kind of oops, running out of room here, but that's fine because we're running out of room. We've decided that the water is going to fall down a lot further than we want. We can just move this up and it's still aligned to the pixel grid. It's not a problem. So we can just zoom back in and oops, make sure we're on the right layer and we're good to go. Just finish that off, fill in that gap. Perfect. Looks like it's kind of petering out a bit. It should actually be more like that. Yeah, that looks okay. Not perfect. But again, good enough. In fact, what looks so bad is it's too thick along here. So we can get rid of those. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and we now want to add the highlights to the water. You can do it on the same layer or you can do it on a layer above, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm actually might put a statue or something in this water here. So we'll do the ripples sort of rippling in a circle around that. And then when it comes down to the flowing river, you obviously want them to be um, straight again because it reinforces that isometric kind of viewpoint. Um, but also they would be straight. The water is running in that direction. So uh, that is what it would look like. Now I found white is a bit too bright for this for the um, highlights on the water so I just tend to do an offset grey which is basically white but not all the way there and that just adds a nice little bit of reflection as if the sun was coming off of the water like this and then we just drag it down add a few blobs and things like that okay now let's see uh, this is completely off the bat I didn't plan to do this but let's see if we can add a statue or something of some kind just to show you that squares do still work um, let's choose, oh, do I have a grey in this palette? No, I don't. Okay, let's choose like a nice kind of bluish grey down there. And then if we actually reduce the opacity of all of those, we can kind of see the grid a bit easier, but still see where it applies on the new layer up to 100 on the new layer according to the grid. So we can make, for example, it doesn't line up exactly with these these two squares would be too big because we want it to be one square, but what we can actually do is put it in the middle of the grid. You don't have to be consigned to it perfectly. You just have to use it as a guide. That's kind of the point of it. Um, and then it needs to come up by a certain amount. And so does that. And then follow, follow the lines. Um, so that would be the flat surface. And then that would be the higher segment. Okay. That looks fine. Um, not perfect, but it will do. And then we can just drag these back up and we know that we're in business. Okay. Um, I've set the brush accidentally to 50% opacity. Got to stay on top of that. That's why it was having trouble. And we'll just quickly fill this in. 
like so. Here we go, a bit of a bigger brush. So we can do that. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we want a lighter gray for the sun facing side. Like this. And then maybe what we want is actually, uh, let's have like a bright pink, powerful gem of some kind. And what that would actually do is if we grabbed some of this gray, make it the pink a little bit gray, kind of highlights it as if there's light coming off of that or something dripping down. Um, and then perhaps we can have like a, ah! <laughs> uh, no, we won't do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, what I'll quickly do uh, for this one is I'll just grab this old sky and bring it in. Make sure it's in the right area and then drag it underneath. And it's a little bit too small, so we'll just copy that over. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, this one isn't quite as reformed as this one because uh, I took a bit more time with it. But you can see where I'm coming with this. Um, it's a really nice, simple, isometric grid way of doing art. So I hope you learned something, guys. If you did, great. If you didn't, that's also cool. Um, I hope you can find some more isometric tutorials elsewhere. And I'm sure you will, because there's plenty on the internet. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.